This is a Digital Music Trends coverage of Medium 2014, an interview with uh, Doug Scott, the VP of Marketing and Artist Relations at Bandpage. DMT's coverage is brought to you by CI, the leading provider of digital delivery services to the independent community on ci-info.com. Hi Scott, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for joining me. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So I'm going to follow up uh, from last year's interview with Bandpage, which was with uh, uh, Chris Wiltsey uh, from the company. So, uh, you know, we're going to talk about what's happened in the last 12 months, essentially. You know, uh, Chris outlined uh, what happened uh, uh, beforehand. So, you know, your switch, uh, you know, what happened with Facebook and uh, the new strategy around the company. But really a lot of what's happened in the last 12 months has been making that new uh, perspective, new strategy uh, a reality, right? So uh, your API strategy seems to be paying off right now. Yeah, it's been a very exciting year for Bandpage. We've been, uh, as you mentioned, it's been a long time in the making where you know, Bandpage's goal is to help artists make more revenue uh, in the digital era and ultimately grow their fan base. Yeah. And when we stepped back and really looked at how best to do that, it was making sure that we can help artists get their content and their commercial offers distributed out wherever music fans might be. Yeah. And so to do that, we had to build a you know, technology platform that can serve many masters out there in many different environments, but also um, building those business relationships and that trust with those distribution partners and with artists, that just takes time. And so the last six months in particular have really seen that strategy start to come to fruition. So what's happened over the last six months is we started with an integration with Vivo on the web and Xbox Music. Uh, we then added in uh, Rhapsody, which was our first commercial integration where we started to promote offers from artists through um, a streaming service. Then we added a deal with Live Nation. Uh, and then we have actually uh, three deals that are already signed that we haven't announced yet, um, but that are very major deals and we're really excited about and you'll hear a lot about them in the coming weeks. Yeah, sure. And we're looking at a double-sided sort of uh, demand. On, on, on the one side, you have the demand of the bands that want their information, which is available on various services, to be as up-to-date as possible. And on the other side, you have the services them th themselves, which don't want to look out of date when people go and look at a buy of a band or, yeah. or anything like that. And they, they don't want to give people outdated information because that's that makes the service look bad. So I guess you're servicing both ends. That's exactly right. I mean, one of the no one is more invested in the outcome of of these models than the artists themselves. Yeah. And so our goal is to give the artists as much control over um, their brand, if you will, and their you know and the things that they offer, and make sure that those things are available at the moment that a fan is saying, "Hey, I'm interested in this artist. I want to interact with this artist." Yeah, and so uh, how do bands perceive Bandpage today? Like, uh, you know, as as artist relations person, like uh, yeah. when you talk to bands, uh, where do you see the, the the best, the most value at the yeah. moment out of the platform? Because they might not necessarily perceive yeah. these things uh, as a whole uh, yeah. that much, but the, there might be other other aspects of it that, that work better for them. Uh, to be honest, this, I think I might have the easiest job on the planet right now, <laughs> um, walking in and talking to artists about what we're doing yeah. and the solutions that we're providing. The benefit is immediately apparent. You know, the ease of use of being able to get that information accurately distributed to all of these different places where their fans are. It's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah. Uh, in the true sense of the word. So there's not much of a discussion of if someone should do it. It's really a discussion of how best to take advantage of it, yeah. what kinds of content should they be displaying, like uh, which kinds of photos are working best, really optimizing that so that they can make the most of that engagement. That's great. And looking at uh, you know a band page as a springboard for fans to go on and discover more about the artist, uh, whether it's discovering more or uh, buying something from the artist, you know, what, what have you been working on lately? Um, well, oh gosh, there's so many things going on. Um, you know, one of the biggest things for us is making sure that these integrations with our partners are deep yeah. and robust, that we're passing along as much information as possible, um, and that it's as accurate as it can possibly be. Um, there's a lot of nuance behind the scenes of making the match between an artist profile at a partner and the artist profile that uh, someone puts into Bandpage. Right. So we spend a lot of time on that. We've got some fantastic features um, that we've been in beta testing on around uh, events and tour dates um, that are really exciting. You know, they're not sort of fully rolled out yet, but they they are very encouraging about providing artists even more flexibility and opportunity to make um, 
more money and more engagement around their their live live events. Um, so there's some really cool things coming in that regard that we're excited about. Yeah. Um, gosh, there's so many other things I could keep going for uh, for hours on this. Our ro- our roadmap is yeah. amazing. Our product and engineering teams are incredible, yeah. uh, and they're just every week, every release that comes out, they're adding uh, tremendous new things to our platform. And of course, uh, as a platform that caters to artists, you also uh, keep an eye on uh, uh, the other tools outside of, of your own ecosystem that the artists may, may be using to monetize their content or to 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 sell whatever they're doing or to uh, crowdfund whatever they're doing. Yeah. So uh, in those conversations, like w- w- what is coming up today, for example, I had a chat with uh, Benji from Ban- from uh, um, uh, Pledge. So you know, mm. what, are these platforms also coming up as a, as a vehicle for the for the artists uh, to 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 get the music across? Yeah, I, I think there's some tremendous symbiotic relationships. With within within the space right now for us um, and for artists overall and I think some of the things that pledge music is doing is are, is great yeah. um, um, and uh, you know some of the other technologies and some of the other services that are interesting right now are some things that allow um, artists to harness the social power yeah. of their fan base um, lots of times uh, we'll be say for instance through our store we'll be We'll have an experience for sale, either like a VIP meet and greet with an artist or something like that. Um, and that some for some fans, that's just out of their price range or other things, giving them an opportunity to earn that um, in exchange for some other form of value, such as like promoting the offer on social networks or things like that. It's something that several other entities are doing. There's a company called Fanatic yeah. out of Los Angeles that's doing some interesting things there. Um, Jamplify, there's a couple of other like companies that are doing some cool stuff. Yeah. And I think that that's really powerful as a component of the larger ecosystem. Yeah. And looking at the uh, activation of uh, bands that are already on, on band page, of course, you have huge amounts of bands on, on the service. Uh, and uh, 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 do you see, for example, you know, if, if you do a deal with Evo, say, when you, I mean, last year, uh, did you do a communication out to artists that this was happening and that they should go and uh, up, update their pages to make sure that they were up to date if they had videos on Vivo? And if so, does that increase the engagement also of the bands with, within your own platform? Yeah, no question. Uh, so we, one of the things we're very fortunate in having is because of the heavy adoption of, of Bandpage as a Facebook application, we have hundreds of thousands of artists that use the platform. Um, and as a consequence, one of our best communication channels is just reaching out to our existing artist base to inform them of the things that are going on for us. Um, so and, you know, as we add new partners, we reach out. Um, and as soon as we started really reaching out, this is about six months ago, we immediately saw an uptick in the level of engagement on the platform, and um, you know, and particularly amongst uh, you know uh, large artists, we saw a, a very, very significant jump of re-engaging with the platform in a really meaningful way. So over a hundred percent kind of growth uh, of that, uh, and that's sustained uh, since that point, and it's only kind of grown. Yeah. So. And you're talking about the ecosystem, you know, it's, it's a huge amount of bands that are on Bandpage. Uh, for the future, of course, you know, there's going to be an increase in, in, in your data play, you know, more deals are yet to be announced. Uh, uh, are you also looking at, uh, for example, increasing the engagement of fans within the Bandpage ecosystem to allow them to discover other bands that are on Bandpage and might, might be suitable to their taste? Do you have any plans uh, in that regard? Not really. Right now, we're not really a, a direct B2C kind of yeah. platform. Um, people can come to Bandpage and browse around on, in experiences, um, but it's really not the point. And you can think of Bandpage as a as a place to as an artist to come and make sure you can review your content in a nice clean format, have a very simple tool for uploading and you know, modifying uh, your content, and then knowing that the technology that underpins it is going to accurately and quickly disperse it across the place where your music fans are. I think honestly right now uh, what the music industry doesn't need is necessarily another place for fans to go <laughs> yeah. to get music. I think what it what it needs is um, making sure that the fans where they are engaged have the best possible experience and that's yeah. what Bandpage is focused on. Yeah, sure. That's that's great. And finally, uh, talking about sort of from a technology standpoint, uh, what what is uh, Bandpage built on today? You know, is it all HTML5? Is it accessible from every type of device? Uh, you know, the widget of course and and uh, how do you see that that future going? Yeah, and we I mean, we continue to optimize, um, but it is accessible from all widgets. All our widgets are it's are accessible from all devices. Yeah. Uh, obviously, mobile is uh, a huge amount of the engagement with music content these yeah. days. So we have a very heavy focus on ensuring that we have a mobile, almost a mobile first kind of approach in some ways uh, to our product development. 
Yeah, it's great. Well, Doug, it was great catching up with you guys. And uh, of course, it's uh, bandpage.com for any artist uh, uh, or label that might want to, to check out the service. It's a, it's a good way to, it's a really good way to keep your information up to date on some of the core services that are there as well. So uh, definitely go and check it out. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks a lot. It was great seeing you. And this has been the Digital Music Trends coverage of Medium 2014. You can find out more on digitalmusictrends.com or youtube.com slash digitalmusictrends. Thank you.